Follow me? Can you get me? We're going to give people a headache. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are going to give people a headache. Hey! It's noon! Does that mean 12? Hey, is it 12 a.m. or p.m.? PM. Okay, good. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Festool Friday. Welcome to Festool Live. Everybody's in the house today. Sparky's already taken a nap. Yes. Look, look, Sparky just relaxed. He's ready for the show. Behind the board, we have our brand ambassador. Her name is Minnie Gleb. Over here, we have the big D. Hey. All right. And behind the camera, we have, uh, man, I'm getting old. Oh, Chris, the unit <laughs> side burnt. <laughs> okay. Online, we have Brent Shively from the Build with Brent series on YouTube. That's a must check out. Whew. What episode is this? 98. 98. Two away from what, baby? Syndication. What? Syndication. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so don't forget to check us out. Hey, did I scare you, Spocky, or do you smell food? Uh, Larry's in the lunchroom. Oh, Larry's in the lunchroom? Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> Everybody, welcome. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Don't forget that after this episode, this will also live, of course, it's going to live on YouTube, but it lives on Facebook and Instagram. Correct, guys? Yep. I'm getting a nod. I said that okay. Mm -hmm. Why don't you ask me anymore, Chris, if we should, the folks should hit the subscribe button? They know oh, it. it's the bell. Yeah. Two and hit for notifications so you don't forget. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay, so I have one announcement to make. Next Tuesday, I'm in Chicagoland for a full demo day at JC Licht in Addison, Illinois. Oh, no, Illa is that how you say it? Illinois? Illinois. Illinois. No, it's Illinois. I know how to say it, okay? Hey. I'll be there from 8 to 4. I'm going to take a little bit of a lunch. But in the morning, we're going to cover paint applications with the Festool system. In the afternoon, it's wood applications. I'm going to reiterate that. That's June 7th at J.C. Licht in Addison, Illinois. Woo! That's it. Minnie, do you want to add anything about what's going on around? Anything? Happy summer? What's going on? Oh, weather today. It's All weekend, it's going to be amazing. It Good is, work. huh? Oh, Yad work? Yad work. Yad work. Okay, cool. Okay, big shout out to Judah and Sayla. Thanks for watching. He loves that. <laughs> they make the best posters for us. We love you guys. Okay, so let's get going. Episode 9. If you go back and look at it, I talked about Sanders all the entire festival live. Guess what? I'm going to do it again. But we've already done Orbital Sanders, haven't we? And I, I don't forget what episode that was. It was just recently. I'm trying to break down each category and go more in depth of each category. We already did the orbitals, whether cord or cordless. Uh, upcoming later this summer, we're going to really deep dive into Rotex Sanders. It's just a continuous, continuous amount of questions about them. So the way I'm going to break down each of these categories, and I have been, is we're going to be talking about the top questions that we get in that category on random orbit. And bear with me, because there's a lot to unpack on this episode, and I'm going to try to make it as clear as possible. Hey, Mo! <laughs> it, so, it sounds funny. I love talking about Sanders because I said, what's so special? And I'll tell you when. It was back in 2003. I said, what's so daggone special about Festool Sanders? Oh, boy. I ended up buying one and then another and then another and then another. It's just, it's amazing how well they work. And I'm going to talk a lot about that as I go through this. Okay. So, I'm going to do a little bit of a review here. Um, when I talk about Sanders, I talk about the different orbits in any training I've ever done on Sanders. We've covered this category here, orbital, okay? That's the DTS, ITS uh, series. And then what we're going to cover today is random orbit. It's doing this orbit, but also spinning with a, uh, a counterweight in, in it. It's a round pad, basically. Eventually, we'll get into the Rotex, and we've covered almost everything in rotary, and that's the Planex Sander. The Planex is a continuous on the plane X. The 2.0 is random orbit, but I'm not going to cover that today. Cool? Good. Okay. So here we go. Here's the questions that we get all the time. Oh boy. <laughs> and I'm going to do it just like this. 
5, verses 6. 3, verses 5. New, verses old. Corded, verses cordless. And in the midst of all of that, whew, <laughs> I'm going to explain what those numbers mean. Okay, so let's talk about 5, verses 6. In other words, we have 5-inch random orbit sanders and 6-inch. So for the North American market, or particularly U.S., I'm going 5 and 6-inch. Where around the world, 125 and 150 millimeter pad size. So maybe this will help you a little bit. I'm going to write it right down here. Big D. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was taught 25 millimeters was roughly what? One inch. So if I look at this pad here, and this is the ETS 125, 125 millimeters is what? It's five inches. So that's why the 150 and the 125. Okay, but it gets, so, so when somebody asks, okay, so the difference between the five inch and the six inch pads is one inch. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I was taught it's 32.5% more pad on the six inch versus the five inch. Okay, now, so someone will always ask, which one should I get? And I go, and I'll always, in a joking, but not really joking, is I'll say, do you like to sand? You will get more done with a six inch versus a five inch. But here in North America, the standard platform is a five inch. We call them palm sanders. And yes, when you're doing a lot of vertical surface, this is a lot lighter. Okay, or more ergonomic than this one. This is a lot heavier, the six inch. But this is the old series. They're still in at price point in our catalog in online. But we came out with these a few years ago. These are the EC motors, brushless motors, but the difference is this, and this is why I wanted to do this, old versus new. I want to create that drill down for you if you're trying to decide which sander you want in the random orbit category. I'm just going to grab this three inch, and I'm, I mean, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible, I said that. I'm going to grab this six inch and this six inch, and it's the ergonomics to this, okay? so. Remember what I said a few moments ago? I said sanding on a vertical surface. This is a little top heavy, okay? But look at this one. This is perfect. We're basically putting a super ergonomic form for whether flat surface or a vertical surface. Every time I bring out either one of these to you when I'm demonstrating in person, I say, let's try this one and then this one. And I go, which one do you like? And I go, Every single person says this one. It's the ergonomics, and we've learned with it over time. So I just want to point that out. That is the difference between a five-inch uh, five pad and a six-inch pad. Or for everybody else around the world, a 125 versus a 150 pad. It's more surface area, so you're going to get the job done quicker. Okay? I just wanted to point that out. Whew. Minnie, did you understand that? Oh, I think she's kind of just saying that, okay? <laughs> Focus. She's writing a mile a minute. Okay. And I went through the ergonomics because I wanted to make sure you make the choice. If you can get yourself into a showroom of one of our system partners around the world to try either one, whether the tall one, as I call it, or the more ergonomic, the newer one, try both and decide, hmm, how long am I gonna be using them? Okay, uh, what's my fatigue ratio on this? And I'm gonna tell you, at home, I have this one. I use this one because I like the weight of it. Because when I'm flattening or doing my final sandings on tabletops or buildups or panels, I want that weight. I hope all of this is making sense. But yes, do I have one of these at home as well? Yes. Whew. Okay, now, 
Next, I wanted to cover what we've gone through, whether on the, the older versions or the newer versions. This is one of the top questions we get. Big D, do you have this? Can you look on top here? Okay, these are identical sanders in each category, okay? The thing that everybody asks is a three and a five on the top here. That's the size of the orbit that are produced. A three is a less aggressive orbit, a five is a more, uh, no, a three is a less aggressive orbit, a five is a more aggressive. So, <laughs> so why would you want to sand slower? And that's the question, or why would you want a less aggressive orbit or a slower outcome? It's, whether you're, it's when you're finishing and polishing finishes. You're sanding in between coats of finish. Also, in a shop, I might put somebody in a three who's brand new so they don't burn through veneer because five can be a very aggressive orbit, especially on this brushless motor version. Oh boy, so what I learned early on when I first started at Festool, and I'm gonna use these because they're a little bit easier to show. Don't do this at home. And Big D, I'm gonna need a zoom right in on here, okay? When somebody says, what do you mean a three millimeter orbit? I'll show you. I'll plug it in, okay? And you see this right here? You guys, everybody knows that if I put a lot of pressure on here, I can stop the pad. But I'm gonna actually hold it with my hand as I start it. I'm gonna put a dot right here. Okay, so you can see that. Big D, can you see that dot? So as I hold it, you see what appears? Can you see that with the camera? A circle. And the diameter of that circle is what? Three millimeter. So hear me out on this or follow me on this. I'm going to take this and go like this. And I'm gonna put a dot here. And this is the five. And I'm gonna turn it back around. So Big D, you got that? Okay, see that now? See the much bigger circle? So what's happening is that grit on here is being taken around the, the circumference, it's being taken on a longer orbit and it's a more aggressive, it's a larger orbit. So it's, 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 it's that much more work it's doing versus the three. So if somebody comes up and says, hey, what, uh, which one should I get, the three or the five? I'm automatically gonna say, hey, do you finish finishes? And they go, yeah, that's okay. Go with the three. Now, if somebody comes up to me, and I'm gonna really confuse you now. If somebody comes up to me and says, hey, I'm looking to buy a random orbit sander, six inch, and I already have a Rotex RO150, which one should I get? And I'll ask the question, <laughs> okay? Do you sand finishes? They go, yeah. And I go, okay. Perfect, or I'll ask the application, what are you gonna use it for a lot? If they say, hey, it's for another guy in the shop and he's just taking down material, I'll put him in the five. The reason I'm saying that is when I put the Rotex in the random orbit, okay, mode, <laughs> guess what it is? It's a five millimeter orbit. So what may complement your Rotex is the three, because that's your finish the finish sander. I hope all of that made sense because that is one of our top questions we get when it comes to our 150 millimeter sanders or six inch sanders. Good. Whew, man. You know what's great about Festool Live? It's, you can go back and watch these and you can say you're, oh yeah, what did, what did they say? Oh yeah, now I know how to, because you may not be in the market now, but eventually you may be in the market for one of these and you may go, oh, okay, I get it. All right, now, <clears throat> this is still a very popular one uh, here in our Festool system because it is just, how do you say, it's a standard, I think, around the world, especially here in the U.S. And um, I always want to make sure that everybody understands all the, the cool technology inside these sanders. Um, <laughs> Go grab a sander from another brand. And this is something that I realized early on when I had one of these, okay? Um, and people don't realize this. It's on all our sanders. It's this little piece of rubber right here. 
It's hard to see, okay? It's on all the sanders, it's right here. But you can really see it on the ETS 125 REQ. I'm calling the R out on that, because that's important. Okay, if I pull it back here, see this rubber? Okay, it's not a dust shroud. And they get these little carbide nodes in there. That pad, or this rubber, hits this pad right here. And if we come in and look, you can see where it's starting not to wear, but it makes contact with the pad. In other words, when I'm sanding with this, okay, and I turn it off, the pad stops. That's actually a pad break. Because it's making contact with the pad, it stops it within two or three seconds. Now, remember Festool's a system. We're not gonna get dust, okay? That's important. But also what's important is this on the dust extractor. Chris, you're gonna have to come in here and get this. Because every time I sand, I always wanna make sure that people see this. That's our variable suction. I'm gonna put on manual. You hear that? Okay. Now, I'm gonna put it on auto. Hey, Minnie, yeah. can you drop your dry erase for a second? Yeah. I'm gonna have you assist me. I would be delighted. Okay, Minnie's gonna sand, check it out. <laughs> and she didn't know. Come on in, Min Min. <laughs> hey, hey guys, I just, and gals so watch it. I just want you to see, this is our real superstar in the room. Minnie, I'm gonna have you sand with this, okay? <laughs> and when you sand, I'm gonna have you move it like this, okay? okay. Go ahead. And as I do this, I'm gonna turn it down. And you're actually, see how that broke the surface tension? It's actually starting to float. This is full suction, okay? Now, and I can notice right now, the pad is spinning more efficiently. So you're getting, it's just getting perfect, but also it's starting to float. And go ahead and turn that off, Minnie. No, watch. Oh, there's a, a, there's a button there? Perfect. Wow. Thank you, Minnie. And once again, thank you, Spocky. <laughs> okay. So, Minnie turned on the Bluetooth. She's so cute. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, the reason I wanted to point that out, it's a system. It's just not the sander here. It's also the, our dust extractor. And that var variable suction is another number one... Um, feature on there that people ask questions about why variable suction. So many, when you were sanding, okay, it's, it broke the surface tension, right? Mm -hmm. It's not pulling down to the material. I had a very light pressure on my hand. I didn't hang on to it. It didn't jerk away from me. It was all easy peasy, very light. Very wow, and she had no idea she was gonna sand today. <laughs> wow, I wanna buy one from you, Min Min. <laughs> okay, the important part of this, as that's one of the features on our dust extractors to work with our sanders to, re to absolutely create less of a chance of getting the swirl mark. Hopefully I said that correctly. There's a lot of other ways you get swirl marks. Inferior paper, uh, too much pressure on the sand, uh, you're staying in one area. But if you, and Minnie was perfect, she let the sander do the sanding. The real tool, I'll say this every single time I teach people about sanders, the real tool is the paper. You gotta choose the machine, right, to move the tool. And it must be a broken record when I teach people about sanding. So, that is one reason you get swirl marks, is there's too much pressure being put on the sander. Even if Minnie wasn't putting a lot of pressure, it could, the vac could still, or CT desiccator could still pull too much. We've released and we, the surface tension of the sander. <sighs> That's all I have to say about that. Now, corded versus cordless, and this is why I called out the IREQ. You're gonna notice right here, there's a groove. That's important. We also have that groove right here on the cordless. See that groove? It must have an R on it because <laughs> there's been other versions of the ETS-125. Okay, but make sure yours has the R because what attaches to that is right over here. <laughs> it's our what? It's our edge or profile center. I think I did a whole Festool Live on it.
This is an amazing attachment because it now takes your ETS-125 IRQ or your ETS-C and makes it what? A right angle sander. And the best application is right here, a countertop. Okay, and I could take that, super simple look. I take it like this. I bring it right to 90, right here. And I highlighted, I highlighted these angles. Sorry, I'm trying to get the right camera angle and do this is a little difficult. But I'm gonna tighten it up. And now I'm gonna get a perfect 90, just like this. See that? In other words, I used to, I used to struggle with this in my shop in Fort Lauderdale where I using a belt sander. I got fairly proficient with it, but I, when I was doing mica tops, but I didn't want to get the bow in there, and that's really difficult to do. This here makes it absolutely perfect 90. So if you cut it at 90 and you, need, you get a little bit of wavy on there, man, just take this right angle attachment with the ETS REQ or the ETS-C. Uh, cordless sander 125 it works perfect every single time um, so the question is this when it comes to cordless with the ET or the 125 is which one should I get and I'll say well are you in the shop the most of the time or do you need it to go out to a job site and go remote cordless and they go, I like to have both. I go, you can have both if you get this one because there is a package where you can get this, which is our hybrid battery. There's no battery cells in here. This, it will accept a plug it cord. So when you're in the shop, okay, you can use this just like this one. It's the same Sanda. <clears throat> it's got a brushless motor. Okay, you can use the bag, or what's beautiful about this is I could take the bag off. I swear, that's not my bag, baby, okay? And I could put this on, and guess what I get? Oh, wait a minute. I could take this and plug it in. And guess what? Now I have this version here, here. So that makes it wicked easy for you. Oh, I'm going to the job site. I gotta go sand a uh, a sill or two, I could take this, grab a Bluetooth battery, put this right on, and guess what? I'm sanding away out on the job site. I have seen so many people make that decision, spend a little extra money, and now you have bo be both, best of both worlds. Holy moly, am I discombobulated today, eh? Okay, I think we're doing good. I want to talk, I think I'm going to be repetitive on this, but boy, we were down in Austin uh, at Rubio Monaco doing some, uh, a maker challenge, and I had to break this out. We were doing Live Edge, or th the makers were doing Live Edge, and I, they were struggling. And, uh, well, the first thing they did is they broke out a Rotex, and I started sanding this Live Edge, right? Okay, with the hard pad because that kind of fared it a little. But then they wanted to say some of the natural edge on there instead of getting too many facets or sharp edges. So I said, why don't you use an interface? And someone says, what's an interface pad? Hear me out, because I just, I just love showing this to everybody because over the years, it goes missing. It really does, and it shouldn't, because it's, I, I don't think any, I, I really don't think anybody else has that, or at one time, nobody else had it. So if I'm sanding the top of this live edge, okay, no problem, right? I want the pad on there flat, because I want to keep dead flat. But we have this, and you'll see how spongy it is. Okay, it follows contours. So this allows you what? It lines up, you still have dust extraction, but I don't want to create flat spots on here. I can take this and look at this. I can get right in nooks and crannies with that, but also maintain that live edge. Okay, so for sanding live edge, I would always recommend uh, a hot pad, and I usually use, and the hot pads are here, they're in blue. Um, that helps you fare and take some of the back or the cambium off, and then you can hit it with um, the uh, <laughs> interface pad. It interface.
spaces between and the tool, which the tool is the paper. See that? Cool. Okay, so really quick, let me see if I covered everything. Okay, good, I did. <laughs> I could sand those notes off later. <laughs> All right, I think I covered everything. Big D, good? Sounds good. Wow, <laughs> once again, look at the time. I, I said at the beginning, that's oh, gonna be 10 minutes, guys. All right, wow. Whew. Minnie, how's the other side look? Look at this, guys. Look at everybody tuning in. I'm so happy. Oh my goodness gracious, okay. Wow, <laughs> Minnie, I saw a new name on there I didn't recognize, okay. Here we go. We have Soren from Denmark. We have Des from Harrogate, England. We have Mark S. from Woodcraft in Springfield, Virginia. Do you guys realize Mark has just about been there all the whole time with us? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. We have Lucan, Switzerland, always there. Larry from Sun City West, Arizona. Dirk from Dayton. Joe from Waseca. Michael from Paris, France. Oh, Michelle from Paris, France. Or Mikkel from Paris, France. Blake Weber from Novata, Novato, California. How you doing, Blake? Michael from Edmonton, Alberta. George from Naples. Is that Naples, Florida? Naples, Italy? Naples, and there's a pine tr uh, palm tree beside it. <gasps> Naples, Florida. How you doing, George? Hey, <laughs> you got a lot of rain heading your way this weekend. Wake Forest, North Carolina. Mike M. Woo! From Austin, Texas, brother. How are you, Mike? We have John from West Fairley, Vermont. Lawrence from Dublin, Ireland. Hey, hey. Dale from Swadilinco, England. Los Angeles. Tom from Patton, Pennsylvania. Zionsville, Indiana. It's that way, about five miles. Southern California. Eric from Sinaloa, Mexico. Sinaloa, Mexico. Hi, Eric. Warren from Batavia, Ohio. Dan from Whitestone, New York. Willie, Spectrician, how are you? Tom and Kelly, always there with us. Thank you. From Eatonton, Georgia. Brad from LaGrange, Indiana. Mow, 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 mow. Hey, Johnny O from Atco, New Jersey. Did you catch that reference? You didn't, LaGrange? Mow, 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 mow. Never mind. Great album. Johnny O from Atco, New Jersey. HFF from St. Louis, Missouri. Ian from East Yorkshire. How are you, Ian? Paris or Montreal, California. I mean, Canada. Louis. <laughs> wow. Luis from Portugal. How you doing, Luis? Mike. What's that, Minnie? Hands up. Stick people. Mike, stick people. Woo! Mike, how are you? Delaware. Oh. <laughs> Minnie, it's awesome. Mike from, hey. Delaware, that is wicked cool. Yizu from Paramaribo, Suriname, I think I got it. Rob from South Devon, England. Anthony from Staten Island, the Netherlands. Faros Island, that's new. Matt from Newark, Ohio. Rob from Thurring, England. Yuckholt, Washington, I know who that is. Warp the Woodsman from Portland, Oregon. Portland, no, Port Allen. Louisiana, Whew. Kevin from San Antonio, Texas, GGB Design, Plano, Texas, Henry from Chicago, Katie, Texas, Dave from Rio Rancho, New Mexico, Fayetteville, Georgia, Allie from Denmark, Jed from New Orleans, Laylord, Connecticut, Everett <coughs> from Homedal, New Jersey, or Holmdel, New Jersey, Marcos from Brazil, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Marvin, Hawaii, Aka from Finland, or Aka Finland, Sydney, Australia, goodness gracious, Jason from Polyup, Washington, Andy G from Enfield, Connecticut, Dan from Kingman, Arizona, Leo from Holland. Minnie's still writing. I'm turning Minnie. I'm turning Minnie. <laughs> wow, look at all the peeps today. It's a Georgetown. Okay, here we go. Monty from Canton, Connecticut. Soren, Romania. Mosk Cap. M O S C Carpentry. How you doing, Soren? Jason from Granite Falls, Washington. Berlin, Germany. 
Victor from New York, Mike C. from Winchester, Virginia, Jam from Inlay, Michigan, Chris from Malta, how are you, Christopher? Norman from Los Angeles, Francis from Boucherville, Quebec, Mike from Tynesboro, Massachusetts, Jordan from Fest Tool Repair, USA, how are you, Jordan? Monroe, Louisiana, Chris from Sopran, Hungary, Toledo, Ohio, Neil from Wheatfield, Indiana, Paul from Reading, Berkshire, UK, Akron, Ohio, Sean Winnegan, Quebec. How I said that right? Kurt from Rochester, Michigan, Omaha, Nebraska, Michael from Queen Creek, Arizona, Tom Slick from North Carolina, Hi Toe, Tag, um, uh, Camo, Sayoban, Padrig, Hi to, oh my God, I got to relax. because I know that's from Ireland. And Dan, Kevin of Mullinga Island. Hi, everybody. I'll be there soon, I promise. Brandon, 1915 Woodworks. How you doing, Brandon? Forney, Texas, Tallahassee, Florida. <laughs> Georgetown, Texas. I knew who that is from Texas. I know who that is. He just wanted me to say that. Okay, is that it? Do you know this is Festool Friday? Did I say I do, that? I do. I said, welcome to Festool Live. I don't think I told everybody it's Festool Friday. How are you? Good? Did What's you that? use the RTS 400 surf prep something? Nope. Surf prep sanding foam pad to sand crown molding. Mm, I don't know. I don't know what surf prep is. Okay, everybody. Uh, or I've never used it, so I can't say. Okay. Um, hey, hey, how do you say this? Tadig? Tadig. Well, Kevin said that he would give you Irish lessons. Okay, good, Kevin. I am yeah. so sorry. Oh, good. I got, I got to get my stuff going here because I'm heading to Ireland in October. All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, did I tell you we love you? We got so much wicked cool stuff planned. Hey, end of June. <laughs> Get ready. I'm going to start announcing it next week, but I'll announce it again. We're all going to Portland, Oregon. We are going to be at Woodcrafters in Portland, Oregon. Really looking forward to it. I've uh, been planning it for a long time. Hey, don't forget this coming up Tuesday. I'll be all day at JC Licked. Looking forward to meeting everybody. Come on in and say hi, please. Um, we're gonna be, we're just gonna have one heck of a time. Minnie's smiling because she knows I'm going on the road again and she knows how much I love meeting everybody. So, hey, from the whole entire Festool crew, we want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting us. I look at this board every week afterwards, and Minnie was right after like our third episode. I get real reminiscent of this because it's been one heck of a journey. But Minnie says we're creating one heck of a community. You are the community. We thank you. We love you. And I am out of here. That's a wrap, baby. Woo! Have a great weekend. Promise me. You betcha.